We're here with Millennium Live at the Digital Enterprise Transformation East Assembly, and I'm lucky enough to be joined by Connor Forrest, an analyst at 451 Research. Connor, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me. So could you just tell uh, you know, our viewers a little bit more about 451 Research and what do you guys do? Absolutely. So 451 Research is uh, one of the premier technology industry analyst firms. We look at the entirety of the enterprise tech stack uh, across nine distinct channels. Mm -hmm. The channel through which I work is the workforce productivity and compliance channel. So we look at all the technologies, tools, and vendors we think are powering what the next generation of, of work is going to look like. And so we, we take a look at, at work management, content management, things like HR tech, uh, communications across that stack. And then we have those uh, eight other research channels that look at things like security, cloud, and really everything that, that comprises the enterprise tech stack. Fantastic. So uh, digital transformation is pretty far reaching and revamping business strategy from you know, the workforce to uh, you know, the cloud and security. What are the success factors, in your opinion, for digital transformation? Absolutely. So you, you touched on a really interesting point, which is digital transformation will look uh, different for, for each organization. Yeah. And I think it is uh, critical to begin defining what your success metrics are before you begin that process. But you know, from our end, when we look at work and we look at uh, digital processes, uh, the one thing we want to do is we want to make sure that digital transformation is enabling new efficiencies, it is enab enabling operational efficiencies, uh, it's reducing cost, uh, and also it's enhancing the ability to innovate. So those are some things that we believe at 451 are key tenets of a successful digital transformation, but those are also echoed in some of our research we've conducted for our Voice of the Connected User Landscape. That's one of the, the surveys that, that we uh, do, and we had some of our uh, survey respondents say those exact same things. The 65% said that they're primarily looking at digital transformation mm -hmm. uh, as a means of really enabling those operational efficiencies and reducing cost. And then an additional 35% said that the ability to innovate, really kind of clearing pathways to innovation, yep. uh, creating a, a new really avenue for innovating within your industry is another key tenet of a successful digital transformation. Interesting. So what does, uh, you know, if, with the you know, C-suite executive, like many who have been here at the assembly, what does, you know, the future of their workforce, you know, with technology look like? Absolutely. So, you know, the future of work and the future of the workforce, there are quite a few trends that we're seeing are going to define the future of what uh, these changes are going to come about. Uh, one of the key things we see as a major differentiator in the way work will change mm -hmm. is we see a further breaking down of silos, a centralization of the execution strategy in a, a move we can we call work ops. Mm -hmm. uh, that is some research that was conducted by a 451 analyst named Chris Marsh. And what that is, is it's an obvious parallel to DevOps, right? Yeah. But we're thinking about repeatable processes. We're thinking about the scalability of work. And we're thinking about how uh, work is not just going to be done uh, within lines of business and within business segments, but it's being going to be done, excuse me, transversally across those business systems okay. so that we're going to have added context, not just how, say, a financial workflow affects the finance department, but how it has the potential to impact other departments or how marketing's workflows have, can take data and can take processes from a neighboring department and fold those in so that we can drive greater value with each individual task. So that, that's one of the main trends, and, and that's part of a, a larger shift we're seeing uh, toward what 451 is deemed the liquid enterprise, which is that, once again, the dissolving of the lines between the silos uh -huh. so that everyone is moving toward a unified goal, and we're seeing how our different approaches to work, whether we are in software development or we're in different forms of the back office, we're in HR, how do our different approaches to work really push together to drive that goal? Do you think uh, a lot of that is you know, collaboration and you know, bringing all the teams together? Collaboration is essential, and bringing teams together, I absolutely agree, it totally is. And that's why we're seeing such a popularity of you know, work, workforce collaboration and communication platforms. Yeah. So obviously Slack is a, is a great example of uh, a solution that uh, took off so quickly based on how simple it was to use and its consumerization uh, approach to enabling that chat functionality, that collaboration. 
so what we'll see and what we think is going to be a really clear, um, really, uh, say, forecasting or future predictor of this move toward work ops and the liquid enterprise is to see a lot of more integrations with collaboration and communication platforms okay. for a variety of workforce and, and work management software vendors. Uh, but also, some folks are even looking at integrating their own proprietary collaboration and communication features uh, within their workflow task-based software as well. So say you're working on a piece of content right now. We, we have a lot of really interesting options in the cloud where we can, say, share comments or uh, track changes and, and mark things to be uh, to be looked at or be completed by another part, another party, uh, but we're going to see a deepening of that collaboration, that live collaboration within workflows on, say, documents or other types of tasks, uh, and we're going to understand how uh, different members of a team are contributing to a project really in real time. Mm -hmm. So that's a key tenet of this future of work we're, we're seeing, and we think that that's going to add an additional layer of context and an additional layer of data that can be analyzed and, and further. Um, used to drive value. Interesting. So um, a lot of e the executives who have been here have talked a lot about you know, talking with their teams and meeting with their teams. Do you guys see, and you know, from your, all your background as well, do you think there will be a potential technology bubble? There's too much technology in how people are working and productivity, or is it, you know, is it going to be even better? I think it could go either way, and I think that depends on the team. So I think when an executive or a team leader, a manager, is examining a new software solution or a new tool, uh, there's always got to be that conversation of, you know, are we buying this just to buy it, or does this drive real efficiency? Does this drive real productivity within our organization? Because there, you know, having that that additional layer of stress from having too many products to manage, too many solutions to manage, really is really can impact your workforce. Yep. And so I think you're absolutely right in that it's something we need to be thinking about. Um, but I think it, depending on how the organization approaches their software stack uh, and their budget and how they're thinking about enabling work for their, for their employees, I think that can be avoided. I think there are a lot of really interesting uh, integrations happening between vendors or consolidations we're seeing happen through really interesting acquisitions. Uh, we use our, our mergers and acquisition uh, knowledge base, our MAKB, uh, as a way to look at how companies are thinking about acquisitions. And we're seeing just a really interesting ramp up uh, within not only industries and markets, but complementary and satellite industries and markets consolidating to add context across uh, you know, multiple products or between and among products that are not necessarily directly competitive, but kind of have that overlap in the middle there. So there, are, there will be solutions in the future that do help us eliminate some of that stress of managing too many products and too many solutions. Uh, but I think it's, it's also a human issue in that managers yeah. and, and IT leaders need to be making sure that when they look to a new product, it's a product that enables productivity, it's a product that, that clears a path for work to get done, it is not just another thing that, that their employees need to manage. And uh, you know, also to ensure ROI. Absolutely. So. Speaking about new technologies and solutions, how does 451 Research really lever leverage these new technologies in order to deliver the best service in market, technology, and business uh, insight? So, you know, we try to keep our finger on the pulse of, of everything that's coming. That's kind of how we define our coverage is that we, we take a look at, you know, definitely what's happening now in the market. We want to know what people are using today. But the way we kind of redefine and define our approach to understanding technology shifts in the enterprise is we try to see what's coming a few years down the road, what's coming even further beyond that, what's coming in the next decade or so, yeah. so that we can understand and help our uh, customers and our clients understand not just what they need to be thinking about their technology stack now, mm -hmm. but how they need to be preparing their budgets, how they need to be preparing their projects, their processes, and their strategies to embrace the trends that will define enterprise technology in the future. So we do that by you know, meeting with companies. We talk to companies about uh, what technologies they're investing in. We meet with the, the newest and kind of most up-to-date startups, folks that are coming out of stealth. Uh, we try to meet with them and just hear about how they're approaching the product, how they're approaching mm -hmm. the market. And if it's something radically different, you know, why are you making that approach? Uh, and if there is something there where we can glean insight from that approach, we try to put that into some of our, our written research, we put that into some of our webinars, uh, and we, we use that data and that information to help companies through strategy sessions and things like that. 
Interesting. So the people talk about the convergence of different influences and force across the technology landscape um, that are causing radical shifts in the industry. How does 451 Research help you know, your clients and the industry navigate these shifts and find ways to capitalize? Definitely. Convergence is kind of a key a point we're seeing uh, across uh, a variety of tooling that's really making a, a deep impact for folks that they're, as they're trying to really navigate what their tech budget is going to look like and, mm -hmm. and how they're going to approach digital transformation. Uh, and so we do that in a variety of ways. You know, uh, one of the ways that we really try to add value in helping folks understand that convergence is we do a lot of uh, analysis and written reports where we uh, take analysts from different channels, say the data analysis channel, our security channel, our HR technologies channel that, yep. that I'm in charge of, and we try to put our heads together on overlaps that we're seeing in the market. So maybe where a product has aspects of both of our channels, aspects of both of our coverage, and we start to try to understand you know, how we think that's going to impact both those individual markets, mm -hmm. and if that's creating any greenfield opportunities as a combined entity. And so once we have our heads wrapped around that, and we have some pretty decent hypotheses around how that convergence is going to impact the markets, then we start to look at um, combining that information, that those hypotheses with our survey data, to help our clients understand how that convergence will impact them. If they're a customer of those technologies, or they could use those yep. to, to increase revenue. So it's a, it's a combination of this, this anecdotal approach to understanding the market, uh, combining our, our unique approaches in different channels, and really combining that with our, our unique survey data to provide a broader contextual approach to that convergence. Interesting. So uh, what technology innovation or trend is really exciting you at the moment, um, and also do you think could be a game changer, whether it's in 2019 or 2020? Absolutely. So within HR technologies, that's one of my coverage areas that I'm really deeply interested in. And I think that one of the technologies that is really going to be impactful there in one of the sub-segments is the use of artificial intelligence uh -huh. um, within uh, workforce management, specifically in terms of recruitment and hiring, uh, okay. but also in uh, retention and attrition detection. So there are startups we're talking to, there are data analytics tools that uh, not only can help determine if someone in your hiring pipeline would be a good cultural fit, would be able to be productive within your environment, that you know helps recruiters be even more effective at their job. It really empowers the human recruiter. Mm -hmm. That's exciting to me because we always want to see how folks are really leveraging technology to find the best candidates. And with, with the increasing talent wars leaving tech and really hitting every aspect uh, of the modern knowledge economy, that's going to be critically important for companies to be thinking through is data-driven hiring. But even more so, once you get folks on board, uh, how do you use technology to keep them there? Yep. And so we see this concept emerging of the employee experience, where it's the sum total of an employee's uh, you know, engagement, their way they approach the culture of their company, the brand, HR. And we see that as a driving factor that needs to be protected if companies want to improve their retention. And there are companies out there that are using machine learning, artificial intelligence and additional data analysis tools to help companies understand which of their employees may be at risk for attrition. Maybe their productivity is dropping. Mm -hmm. Maybe they have negative sentiment in, in group chats about the company itself. So they can either form a succession plan if that employee wants to leave, or maybe they form a mitigation plan with HR and they're able to reach into that employee where they're at, uh, redirect their energy, redirect their focus, help them become more productive, and really save that investment, right? We want to make sure that our folks know uh, who are employees, that the company's invested in them, uh, and really give them an opportunity to learn, grow, and develop, turn them into a, a top performer, yeah. right? So I think that is a really interesting way that companies will be able to really practically use data analytics to improve the experiences of their, empl their employees, but also improve their budgets for hiring and recruitment, uh, and make sure that they're giving their employees the best opportunity to be as productive as possible. Yeah, so that's really interesting, you know, those type of technologies, because this morning at the keynote panel, um, they were talking, you know, about, you know, this, the succession plan, but also, you know, the leadership training from, the, you know, obviously the C-suite, but, you know, building their teams up. Um, and I just wonder, you know, if that type of technology, you know, is also helping with the, you know, training and development and leadership track. Absolutely. So within... Uh, outside of those areas we mentioned, there's also this really uh, interesting growth in one of the other sub-segments of HR technology that we have I 
kind of identified and, and organized as uh, performance development and learning. Uh -huh. And organizational development is, is a, a key kind of part of that. But, you know, th those are technologies that look at a variety of things. You think of learning experience platforms for learning new skills, upscaling, remaining compliant, but also, you know, goals development uh, and helping people accomplish the, the key tasks. So kind of task, uh, task checklist solutions and things like that. And those solutions are critical to help an employee remain engaged uh, based on the data that we have at 451. So we asked uh, our survey respondents for another one of our, our survey, uh, survey products that we do. Uh, what were the most important things about, what they liked most about work, mm -hmm. right? So why do they go to their job every day? Right. And, and three of the most important or the strongest answers they had were a sense of purpose, uh, knowing that I'm doing a good job, uh, and the ability to get things done. And so in those three answers, I'm not seeing salary, I'm not yeah. seeing compensation, uh, I'm really not even seeing company culture. That's yeah. important, it's critical, but you know, when we think about um, folks being able to be given the opportunity to grow and develop. Mm -hmm. um, we are seeing the growth of these solutions that are enabling just that. They're giving folks an opportunity to better understand how they're, they're managing their goals, yeah. which is critical. People want to know how well they're doing. Uh, it also helps them understand where they fit in an organization, how their work is impacting the organization, but also how their work is tied to the overall mission, and that's that sense of purpose. Mm -hmm. You know, companies will attract folks based on what they do. You know, yeah. companies who, who are looking at a job at a certain company, they know what that company does, they know what it's known for. But in a, in a deeper sense, they're wanting to know how their individual workflows, what they do day to day, how's that tied to that mission? And so using these goal development programs, using these portals that companies can use or that employees can use within a company to understand, you know, here's my development plan, here are the check marks that I've marked off, here's the skills that I've learned, that's critically important for retention as well, but it also, it helps you really improve the employee experience because the employee feels invested in. They see a tangible reminder of the things they've accomplished, uh, what they have left to do before they can say be considered for a promotion. Mm -hmm. And it really just gives them a clear picture of where they fit within an organization and team and defines what they're doing within, within, that, within that role. Very interesting. So just switching gears a little bit, you know, we've been here in Charlotte the last couple of days for a great assembly. Um, and you know, thank you to you and the 451 team for joining us. Uh, what have you, you know, if you had to pick you know, one or two, you know, the real takeaways that you, you know, from being here at the assembly? For, from being here at the assembly, you know, I love the breadth of presenters and the breadth of uh, different kind of folks from different uh, roles within the industry that are here all sharing uh, you know, not only their approaches to digital transformation, but really being transparent with what are their challenges? Yeah. What are the unique things about their industry uh, that they have to wrestle with as they try to push their organization into the digital future? I think some of the key themes that have developed that just from sessions I've been in, uh, being a part of the keynotes is, you know, one is it does require a culture change. That's something that, yeah. that we see, you know, in the HR tech and content management spaces that, that I cover, but also, it's been echoed here multiple times is that a lot of times, unless you're some brand new startup with you know, a lot of folks who are right on the board with, with understanding a digital first narrative, uh -huh. um, most of us are in legacy situations. We're in a traditional organization. Those are some of the biggest companies in the world. Uh, and so to really push that digital uh, transformation forward, you really need to start helping folks understand how their role is going to shift um, how these digital tools enable new levels of productivity. It's not just something else to manage. It's not just a new way of doing things. There, there's a purpose behind it. Mm -hmm. And so understanding the cultural shift that is tied to that technological shift is key. And that's one of the, the, the main themes that, that I have kind of uh, pulled out from being here. And I think that goes across all industries. The other trends that, that I've been really interested in hearing is, and, you know, as I mentioned earlier, is that you know, digital, you have to start by defining what it means for your organization and industry, of course. But not only that, you don't define just the goal, you have to define your individual goals as well. So what are you hoping to accomplish? You know, with 451 in our data, we have what our constituents would say are, are keys to successful digital transformation. Mm -hmm. um, but those are, those are pretty broad uh, statements. So what does, an, uh, say, the improvement of an operational efficiency mean for your organization? What is successful cost reduction? Mm -hmm. And I think those where we're getting those, that's where we're getting those varying answers from the, the folks that are here, from the folks that are in leadership positions all over 
uh, all over the enterprise. And that's giving us, uh, at least for me as an attendee, gives me a very uh, interesting uh, way of, of understanding that the way people even kind of define those broad goals down to their individual level for the organization is very broad. And, it, and it's going to be very differentiated based on the industry, the approach, uh, and, it, and it's fascinating. So I think each of them not only will you know, have their individual goals, but those goals will define their tech stack, they'll define their tech investments uh -huh. for the next few years, and that's not going to be the same for everybody. Yeah. Um, what do you, you know, and you've engaged with a lot of executives here, at the, here in Charlotte, um, why do you think it's important for, you know, the C-suite executives to, you know, get out of their silos um, and come to, you know, a small intimate assembly like this? Well, I think there's a few key key reasons. Uh, the first is it's, it's always good to get outside input, whether that's a direct input on your individual project or just to understand how someone else is approaching the same problems you're facing. Yeah. So if you're a CIO, you're a CTO, typically you're not going to have another CIO or CTO at your organization. It's just you. You'll have your C-suite and they'll have an understanding of what's going on, but they're not facing the same challenges with information or technology that you may be facing. Especially mm -hmm. at that at that level, when, when you're an executive level CIO, and your your charge is thousands and thousands of employees, you have some very distinct challenges that, that you need to to overcome. And I think, not that it's going to be some silver bullet that you're going to come here and find someone to give you the answer to all your problems, but you know we think about it like Levy's theory of collective intelligence, right? Not all of us can know everything, but we each have different aspects of a solution that we can bring together to push something forward. Yeah. And I think by Coming to an, an event such as this, especially one that's, that's on the smaller side, it's more intimate as you put it, uh, you get more face time with people. And not only that, it's not these quick, hey, here I am, here's what I am, here's what I do, here's my challenge. Mm -hmm. um, you are reconnecting with those folks throughout the day, and you're reconnecting with those same folks the next day as well. Yeah. So you, can t you give them a deeper idea of your narrative, you, g you gain a deeper understanding of their challenges, uh, and you're able to really think more thoughtfully about you know, what they're going through, what you're going through, where are the overlaps, and how can you share your experience or glean some insight from their experience uh, to drive your tra digital transformation forward and also really kind of take maybe some new approaches to leadership or some new approaches to information technology back to your organization to really, you know, revitalize what's going on. Mm -hmm. it's, it's always good to keep folks engaged. It's always good to keep uh, thinking about new ideas as long as they have business value. And I think a place like this, especially in a gathering of this size, is where you get those ideas. Yeah. And you start to understand the business outcomes that are tied to those ideas as well. Fantastic. So the Millennium Alliance is you know, thrilled to partner with 451 Research. Um, it, you know, in your own words and you know, from your experience, um, you know, why do you think it, you know, it, it's, it's valuable you know, for 451 and Millennium Alliance to continue to work together with, you know, with the technology industry and executives? Yeah, I think you know the 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 partnership that we have is is unique and it's valuable in the sense that um, you know we are looking to obviously learn as much as we can as analysts and as folks we consider subject matter experts in the space um, from folks that are doing it on the ground as well. Yeah. So it gives us the opportunity to meet with CIOs and CTOs, hear about the technologies and trends they're embracing, hear about the things that they think are you know have weight behind them and the things that they think are hype try to help them understand how we see the market as well. It gives us that, that, uh, that ability to understand one another. Uh, but for the folks that are attending here, you know, it gives them, uh, with 451, it gives them a touch point of someone who is not only looking at, say, their particular company or their particular industry, but all the sub-segments within their market or um, some of the complementary or kind of uh, additional markets that are maybe adjacent to theirs and some of the trends and technologies that are taking off in those spaces that may find their way eventually into their market as well. So yeah. it gives them, I think, a broader view, uh, especially for folks, say, that are here that are not involved with content or human resources, which I am. Uh -huh. um, you know, I'm able to provide them some understanding of the innovations that are happening in that space and maybe how that can trickle down to impact their market and their industry as well. And they also you know, love the perspective that you, know, you guys have from all your research and you know industry wide and you know again you know the areas that you specialize in because um, you know often that's something they haven't thought about for a little while definitely so last question can't let you leave without asking what's your number one tip for the rest of 2019 for the c-suite executive 
Uh, for the C-suite ex executive in 2019, um, I'm going to keep it broad and philosophical, but I think uh, my, my number one mantra would be is that context is key. Okay. Um, everything that we are seeing uh, on w within the, the areas that I cover, at least, uh, is it's all about data-driven analysis. It's all about insight. It's all about personalization. But that personalization comes from understanding the context uh -huh. of your end user, understanding the context of where that technology is being deployed, understanding the context of what a new budget you know, enables, what a new approach to transformation enables. So for me, if I'm talking to you know, the CIO and CTO of 2019, what to focus on this year will be that context is key. Fantastic. Conrad Forrest, thank you very much for joining us here with Millennium Live and you know, for your ongoing partnership with 451 Research. Thanks so much. Thanks for having me.